Kuna buwa jungwa mami. Choose Super XP Run 95 and Diesel XP for an energizing driving experience. Always go for Goyle Super XP Run 95. Goyle. Good energy. Electricity, electricity, our taxes, yeah. our taxes, our future. future. Because you see, without our taxes, we wouldn't have good roads, good schools, better hospitals, street lights, and other very important social amenities. When we pay our taxes, we give our children free and quality education. Tell that my money too small. Why should I pay my tax? Look, small. Salifu, it doesn't matter how small or big your business or income is, you still have to pay your taxes. The little taxes from each and every one of us, when put together, could give your community clean water or that deprived school with tables and chairs. Please pay your taxes. It is your responsibility. It is your civic duty. It is the law. Impressive factory. If only I had listened to you, I wouldn't have been in this mess. That devastating fire virtually wiped out the whole factory and my warehouse. Remember my misfortunes last year? Serene insurance assets all risk fire policy that I took were there to pay for my damaged stocks in the warehouse. And my machines that were affected by the flood have been replaced. My accident vehicle is back on the road. Thanks to Serene Insurance Motor Policy. Currently, my goods are on the high sea, covered with the American cargo insurance policy. I was just telling Ajima about Serene Insurance. Oh, Ajima. Tell him more. As a road contractor, I make sure I do my contractors all risk insurance for the projects and then workers compensation for all the workers on site with serene insurance they will make sure they'll cover your unknown tomorrow today serene insurance a new face of insurance call us now MPS Terminal 3 is Africa's new state-of-the-art container terminal at Tema Port. For manufacturers, agro-processors and traders, the new port means business can be done faster. This infrastructure boost will improve Ghana's port handling capacity, connect more trading routes and oil the engine of growth for the economy, creating greater opportunities across all sectors as Africa's markets merge and become the largest trading block globally. MPS, we connect, you thrive. Business and life can be like the sea sometimes. Sometimes serene, sometimes calm. Sometimes turbulent, and at times, it brings the unexpected. However it is like, trust Phoenix Insurance for your home, car, business, and marine insurance needs. Call 0302. 246-319 or 0243-690-492. At Phoenix, you experience a delightful service delivered with wisdom. All right, so welcome back. Uh, we are now going to take a look at happenings in the port and shipping industry in the course of the week. And indeed, in the course of the week, the Ministry of Transport held its uh, strategic review meeting uh, in the central regional capital of Cape Coast. We have details of that particular story for you. Plus, the fact that you would have heard that the Ministry of Finance has made some appointments uh, into the top hierarchy of the Customs Division of the, of the Ghana Revenue Authority, Ghana Revenue Authority, the entire body. So we have these stories for you. Please enjoy. The Ministry of Transport has held its 2024 strategic meeting at the central regional capital of Cape Coast. The event presented the Transport Ministry and its agencies with a unique opportunity to come together to apprise themselves on the programs and projects in the ministry and agencies, the extent of implementation, challenges and way forward. The strategic meeting was also to ensure that the, the central regional minister, Juliana Marigold Hassan, had has called the importance of the transport sector to every aspect of human life and the socio-economic development of the Republic of Ghana. Transport, as we are aware, controls the economic outcome of every country, as transport is essential for the movement of goods and services in terms of our land, sea, air, and all. 
facilitating trade and commerce. Transportation systems enable businesses to assess markets, deliver products to customers and service raw materials. The Minister of Transport, Kuku Furi Siyama, outlined some achievements that have been achieved in the maritime sector. We have constructed a new liquid bulk terminal at Takradi port, constructed a multi-purpose terminal at Takradi port, of which phase one has been completed. The operation will commence around July. Completed the construction of four bed dedicated container terminal at Tema port MPS. Installed 16 state-of-the-art ship to shore cranes and three rubber tie gantry cranes as part of the route during the MPS terminal. Consulted 12 fish landing sites along the coast. Consulted port for Emina. Consulted the Jamestown fishing port, which is nearly completion. We are by 93%. We are developing the Bonkra integrated logistic terminal, which is ongoing. We moved three stamps along the navigable path of the Volta Lake. Completed an assessment study on the Volta Lake. Acquired a total of seven high-speed patrol and rescue boats for surveillance and monitoring of Ghana's territorial waters. Acquired trash schemes to remove rubbish and material from water bodies and protect sea life. He urged the agencies to be innovative to meet the evolving needs of stakeholders and navigate the complexities of the industry. It is important that we continuously strive to improve and innovate our respective forms of endeavor. This means that staying up to date with the latest industry trends understanding the needs and demands of the people, and fostering culture of collaboration, accountability, and excellence. The 2024 strategic meeting of the Ministry of Transport was attended by the board chairpersons and agency heads from the Ghana Ports and Abbas Authority, Ghana Shippers Authority, Driver and Vehicle Licensing Authority, Ghana Maritime Authority, among others. The Finance Ministry has announced new appointments at the Ghana Revenue Authority. The Ministry, in a statement dated Tuesday 9th April 2024, announced that Ms. Julie Isiam now heads the Ghana Revenue Authority as Commissioner General. She becomes the first woman to serve in that role and replaces Reverend Dr. Emishadai Osuamwa, who was relieved from his duties on March 27th. With a stellar career spanning several decades, Ms. Esiam promises a new era of leadership at the Ghana Revenue Authority, driven by expertise, experience and commitment to sustainable transformation. The ministry also announced three others for various roles. They include Mr. Edward Apentin Jamra, who is Commissioner of the Domestic Tax Revenue Division. Ms. Pell Dakung is the Commissioner of Support Services Division, whereas Brigadier General Ziblim Ayurogo is the Commissioner of Customs. The Ministry said these new appointments are expected to strengthen the GRE and ensure that targets are met in an environment of professionalism, fairness and exemplary client care. The Ministry thanked the outgoing leadership of the GRE for their dedication and contributions to the nation. Right, so those were happenings in the port and shipping industry in our country uh, in the course of uh, the week. We're now going to take some international port and shipping news. Titan Clean Fuels, a supplier of LNG and liquefied biomethane, or BioLNG, and STX Group have conducted what is said to be the largest ship to ship delivery of LBM to Hapagloid container ship in the port of Rotterdam. During the ship-to-ship -ship bunkering operation, Titan's Alice Consulage bunker vessel delivered 2,200 metric tons of LBM to Hapag Lloyd's Brussels Express ship, also known as the world's first large container ship that was converted to gas propulsion. This transaction marks Hapag Lloyd's entry into using LBM as sustainable shipping fuel, representing the largest ship-to-ship -ship bunkering operation known to date, the partner said. The Danish government has decided to ban the discharge of scrubber watch water into Danish territorial waters. From 1st July 2025, the discharge of scrubber waste water from ships up to a distance of 12 nautical miles from Danish coast will be prohibited by law. This is the content of a new political agreement concluded by the government and its stakeholders. Ships can use scrubbers to remove sulfur from the exhaust gases resulting from the combustion of heavy fuel oil. The report establishes that sulfur is washed out of the smoke and in so-called open-loop systems, the scrubber wastewater is then discharged directly into the sea. 
According to the Danish Ministry of Environment, this has contributed to excessive concentrations of a number of heavy metals and tar substances in the marine environment. So those were some international port and shipping news. We are now going for the word or phrase of the day. And remember, the word or phrase of the day has been fashioned to bring you up to speed with the terminologies and jargons we use in the shipping industry. Today's word is dunage. Dunnage. Dunnage refers to wood or other material used in stowing ship cargo to prevent its movement. Alright, so welcome back. We are zooming into our discussion proper tonight, and tonight we are taking a look at how to prevent the diversion of transit cargo and what role the custom division of the Ghana Regional Authority can play. And this topic comes on the back of uh, plans by the Customs Division to containerize cargo trucks. Uh, the uh, plan is that they want to ensure that all trucks that you know carry or transport uh, transit cargo are containerized, uh, so that uh, you know there can be proper checks, there can be proper monitoring, and all that you know through. Uh, from the ports through to the final destinations of this, uh, these uh, transit cargoes. Remember Ghana's uh, transit partners, uh, our neighboring Thailand countries of Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso. And I uh, want to find out from customs what has not stated this particular uh, move and some of the challenges you know, uh, that uh, we encounter as a country in our quest to have the fluid flow of transit cargo uh, from our ports to our neighboring Thailand countries. Uh, and this business is particularly very, very important uh, to Ghana and then the Ghana Port and Harbors Authority. And so it behoves us to be able to find ways and means of ensuring that those that we have, we maintain, and those that we don't have, we grab and bring them uh, to use our ports uh, so that we can all enjoy the economic benefits that uh, the transit trade uh, brings. And so it gives me pleasure this evening to introduce to us uh, Mr. Gerard Agueto. Uh, Mr. Gerard Agueto is a Chief Revenue Officer, Ghana, Chief Revenue Officer at the Ghana Regional Authority. He's also the officer in charge of transit. Uh, good evening, sir, and welcome. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Is this your, your first time on our import? Yes. I see. We are, glad, we are glad to have you. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you, too. Thank you very much. Also in the studios with us is Mr. Eric Ediama. Uh, Mr. Ediama is a council member of the Ghana Institute of Freight Forwarders, GIF, and uh, he's also a freight forwarder. You can, uh, you, you can uh, you know, attest. And uh, he also does some transit business as well. And so uh, he'll be sharing his, pers his perspectives from the industry with us. And we also have customs, which is... Uh, you know, the body that uh, takes a look or that is in charge uh, as far as the clearance of transit cargo in our port is concerned. And so, good evening, uh, Mr. Diama. Uh, your first time here? Yeah, good evening. Good evening and welcome. We're glad to have you here mm -hmm. on our port. All right, so let me begin with you, um, Mr. Agueto. If you can, first of all, run us through or walk us through what the state of our transit business in Ghana at the moment is. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Good evening to, my, to the audience. Absolutely, yes. Right. And then greetings from the Commissioner General mm. and the Commissioner Customs yeah. Division. Absolutely. Okay. Right. I'll start by saying customs business mm. is about export mm. and import. Right. Okay, it's the export that tends to become import. Right. Okay. Between two countries. Mm. Okay. If a third country comes in, then that is where transit comes in and then trans transshipment. Right. Okay. And then when transit comes in, uh, uh, taxes of, on the transit are supposed to be suspended. Mm. Okay. So let me just give a, a, uh, a gist on some of the uh, customs suspense regime. Right. Customs has regimes about nine, right. which is export, mm. temporary export, mm. re-export, Home consumption, that is the actual import. Right. And then temporary import, then re-import, mm. then warehousing, transit and transshipment and ship stores. Right. Then free zones. Okay. So these are the regimes for customs procedures. Right. Right. And out of this nine, apart from export and import, the rest are all suspense regime. Right. And when customs says suspense regime, we mean the taxes mm. assessed on those items. Uh, or, or regimes 
are suspended right. for a bond cover mm. until you change your intentions to enter the items or the goods into home consumption. Right. So due to that, they are suspended for some time. Mm. So uh, transit, by, defi by definition, is when one imports goods right. through a particular country. Mm and the taxes and duties are suspended mm. for the person or the importer or the transitor yeah. to go for a bond. Right. The bond will cover the liability of the cargo. Right. Then the cargo or the goods will be placed under surveillance mm. to exit the country right. for re-exportation. Mm. Then we said the transit has left or the goods has left the country. Right. But in any case, if the cargo or the goods does not leave the territory, then it will be deemed as diversion. Right. So it means it has, it's going to enter our local market right. and then compete with... It means instead of going to Mali, Niger, Burkina Faso, exactly. if it ends up in Ghana, that's exactly. called diversion. A diversion. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we have... When we, have, when we say transit to, it is in two folds. Right. We have the inbound transit and then the outbound, outbound. transit. Okay. So any customs station mm. or the port, that's two transactions, inbound and then outbound. Mm. Okay. But those that are going to, are from, we have transit from Côte d'Ivoire right. to Togo, mm. passing through Ghana. And then we have trans transit also from Togo, vice versa, to uh, Côte d'Ivoire. Right. And transit also initiate from the port to the hinterlands, right. where they are deprived of port access. Mm. Example is, like you mentioned, Niger, yeah. uh, Mali, and then Burkina, Burkina Faso. Faso yeah. And at the same time, they also do transit. But most, most time, people's, uh, cons uh, had, had to call it, uh, don't focus on that particular transit. Right. They also do transit from their end to our territories, right. to the port, to abroad. Okay. And sometimes there are controversies. Some time ago, when we deployed ICOMs in... They, they do so premised on the fact that they don't have ports. Or exactly. They see in their yes, because I said they don't have access to ports. To ports yeah. So they use our corridor. Right. So they also do transit. Absolutely. Yeah. So sometime 2020, when we deployed ICOMs, hmm. 2020, June, yeah, there was some controversy when the cargo comes from those hinterlands, when they get to our frontier, they treat them as export. Right. So I, I, I got wind of it, and then I instructed, and then we rectified it. Right. But even still, we have done it about, up to about 80% or something, but mm. it's still not completed, because right. at the port, uh, when it gets to MPS, the carriers don't give them a proper narration, mm. the origin of the cargo. So they also place it under export, right. which is also distorting our export data. Mm. So I spoke to some of the NPS chaps, and I think you will have a, uh, a meeting with the shipping line, right. and then address this issue. Right. Because like I said, trans uh, uh, custom business is about export and import. import absolutely. But when a third country comes in, then it becomes a transit. Right. So there must be a narration of that thing. Okay. So this is all transit is about. about. Awesome. So what's the state of the transit business in Ghana, uh, you know, if you, if you would oblige us? Yeah, transit is doing very well in Ghana. Mm. Mm. Yeah, uh, let, me, let me be, some time ago, I joined the chorus. Right. And especially transit business from the post to the hinterland. Right. Yeah, they say Ghana is losing the transit trade yes. to other places. Mm. So I said, okay. And by my background, I was able to have access to the data. Yes. Manifest, right. and I was going through the manifest, mm. and aside, I said, "Wow, transshipment, Benin, transshipment, Togo, transshipment, Benin, transshipment." So it became alarming. Mm. But I said, "Oh, is that what is happening?" But anyway, the fact that there's transshipment on the manifest yeah. to Togo and Benin. Benin doesn't mean we are losing transit right. trade to them. Okay, because the vessel can call at the port, mm. and then. Because uh, we have a very good draft, about right. 16 meters draft. Draft, yes. Yes, we are, we are third in the sub region. Yes. Uh, Côte d'Ivoire first, Nigeria yes. before us. Nigeria, Côte d'Ivoire has 18 meter draft. Okay. So if a vessel is coming to the port 
and it has come for Benin and Togo. Of, mm. of course, it will come to the closer one. Right. And drop them and go. Absolutely. So when I check and I say, okay, that will be done. I said, okay, let me go further again to check the data. Mm. So what I did was I checked bill of entries. That right. is customs declarations. Yes. That are submitted to customs. Mm. I checked 2022. Right. And I noticed that we had about 32,000 plus bill of entries. Okay. Okay. Then for, tra for transit. For transit. Okay. From only the port. Yes. Then I checked for 2023, mm. and I saw an increase of 34,700. So from 32, it came to 34. 34. Okay. And I said, okay, this is not enough. Let mm. me go in now and check for last year. Mm. From January to first quarter, I just added 10 days about right. April, uh, April to it. Right. And I had about 8,000 plus bill of entries. That's for, from January to... January to uh, 10th April. 10th April. Okay, yes, for, okay, for last year. Yes. And it was around 8,000 plus. Mm. Then I checked for this year. Yes. Also from January to the same date. Yes. And no, no, last year one was 6,000. Yes. And this year one was 8,000. 8,000, okay. So an increase of about 2,000 2, yeah. bill of entries. From, from January to April. From January to April. Yes. Then I said, oh, this is not bad. Then I said, no. Uh, it can be deceptive. Right. Because I know how to handle data. Right. So I said, let me check the mass, gross mass weight of all those BLs. Right. That's a bill, bill of lading. Bill, no, the bill, bill, of bill of entry. Okay. Okay, it's coming from the bill of lading. Yes. So it's the same thing. Yes. But they pick those from the bill of lading. lading so yeah. the same thing. Right. So I checked for 2023, mm. the period I said. Yes. And it was, uh, let me get it right. It was a... That's a tonnage. The tonnage. Yes. That, that came into the country. Mm. It was a... Quite appreciable, I guess. Yes, it was a... Yes, very quite appreciable. For 2023, the tonnage was 308 million metric tons. Wow, 308 million. Million metric tons. For that short period I mentioned. Wow. Yes. Then... I checked for the same period mm. for this year. Yes. And that is 444 million metric tons mm. for transit cargo mm. through the port. Wow. And the difference is about 136,000 metric tons. Mm. So there's an, an increase. Mm. Okay, so it means that it's not true. When people, yes, from, people, from the data. You know, people speculate exactly. yeah. and, and bandy about that we are losing. Exactly. Like uh, I was saying, I, I, I initially I joined the chorus that way, yes. but after my checks, yes. because I have access to data, yes. then I realized that, oh no. Yeah. So I can't go and stand somewhere and, and speak that way Absolutely. anymore. Absolutely. Yeah. So there's an increase rather. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right, so uh, let, I'll come to you, Mr. Uh, yes, Ediyama, but let me, let me uh, still stick with you uh, for a few minutes and find out from you how uh, rampant this issue of diversion is in, in, in Ghana. Um, how serious is it? Not really. Mm. Not really. Right. But once in a while, the unscrupulous guys are able to do something. Mm. Yeah, but that doesn't mean uh, we have to uh relax right yeah we have to step up tighten the security mm. so that they may not have any uh way the way to do whatever they would like to do right yeah so uh i just came recently to the place and uh, uh last week we had a meeting with the stakeholders right because uh it is very very important because gra our core values, uh, one of them, which is responsiveness. Yes. It means you must react quickly mm. and professionally to your customer's need. Right. So they realize that we have to engage the customers mm. and then gather data from them. Right. And when we get that data from them, we can use it to the best. So when we met, DPHA even said, the, from last November, yes. they saved GRA Customs Division mm. about almost 90 million cities right. by implementing certain measures. Right. And I said, no, I have to follow up. Mm. Okay. So it became my interest. So right. I went to the port, 
did my research, mm. look for it, and I got to know that, oh, what they did was they request Ghana Link, yes. our partner vendor, mm. to start arming devices on the house-to-house -house containers right. that are moving from the transit terminal mm. to the trans transit park right. prior to departure. Okay. So it's, it can tell some of the diversion that the people may do within the first leg. Right. Then I said, oh, so after investigation, I realized that it is not fully done. Right. So I spoke to my boss, mm. and I told him that, okay, what we got to do is I have requested Ghana Link. Mm. We will be meeting tomorrow morning right. to ensure they have a dedicated devices mm. also to arm the unstuffed goods into the trucks, right. the open trucks, right. to the first leg of mm. the transit yard. Right. Then they, they place a monitoring unit or tools right. at the gate for customs to be monitoring the movement of the transit cargo mm. from the terminal to the transit park. Right. Then there we say for that leg, everything is complete. Right. Nobody can deviate from that particular route. Right. Yeah. Mm. So we are going to work on that. And the other issue we have been hearing is like the overweight yes. vehicles mm. overloading when they get off the on on route. Yes. They also shed off the goose. Mm. You know. So I took about a couple of days at the transit park, yes. and I did some feasibility studies, mm. and I got to know that, okay, we can get a solution, mm. because uh, firstly, yeah. when you submit the uh, customs declaration, mm. transit declaration to customs, you have to indicate something we call sub-consignment breakdown. Right. Actually, it is how many uh, cargoes may go to one truck. Yeah, sometimes more than one may go to one truck depending on the bill of entry. Mm. Sometimes just one to one mapping. Sometimes yeah. one to many mapping. So when it is overweight, they go and then they shed off and then it results into different things. Mm. So I told I went to the GPH weighing room that we can get we can stop that thing. So I went to the motorway weighing bridge right. and I had a conversation with them. So now henceforth, when the truck is overweight. They should flag customs. Right. And customs will input the details of that truck that will wait into the system. Right. So that it will not be approved. Mm. Movement printout will not be issued. Right. So until they set off the weight, they look, and then the real way, mm. and then we are flagged mm. before it is approved and then it leaves the, so that we can control the first leg movement of what people deem to be shedding off and creating problems right. along. Right. So these are the first two measures that uh, you are taking. You have taken. All right. So with the issue of the, the, the study or the, the research that you did yeah. you, with respect to the transit trade, yeah. you said if I got you right, yeah. it was limited to the ports. Yes, this is the ports. So the exit points, entry points. Were I, I, we haven't gotten to there. Oh, okay. I just came, I just uh, started this about two, three weeks ago. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I haven't gotten to that place yet. All right. So, Mr. Ediama, let me come to you and uh, take your thoughts on uh, what you think the situation of our transit trade in Ghana is at the moment. Thank you for having me, and um, a very good evening to mm. U.S. Mm. Um, I would also agree with uh, my brother here that yes. transit business is um, driving well. Right. Um, only problem we are seeing... Yes as operators mm. of the transit business right. is the cost of doing the business. Okay. That is the major issue that we have at hand. Okay. Having said that... Um, That's the cost of doing the transit business? Yes. Okay. Yes. Having said that, um, the volumes, as uh, my brother has said, um, he is uh, quoting from uh, Peter that um, I have no access, access, access to, access to yes. exactly. Yes, uh, but on the ground, mm. what we know yes. is that, of course, we are losing some volumes mm. to neighboring to go here. Mm. A typical example I can give is uh, one major shipping line, which has been operating here mm. 
over the years. Right. And their headquarters is newly built here okay. in Tema. Mm. But they made Togo right. port their hub mm. for the whole of West Africa. See. Meantime, between Togo port and Tema port, when it comes to security, mm. quality of service, yeah, the port of Tema is, 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 is way is ahead of shore. So you ask yourself, what will you know advise somebody to make such a move? Mm. Definitely, there are some undertones. Right. And you, do you mind sharing those undertones with us? If um, you, you know them. Not, not, not really, because mm. the actual decision made by the shipping line, mm. I will not know why they decide that. Yeah. But as an operator, we know about certain regulations mm. that affect the transit business. Right. Like um, my brother has said, transit business is an international trade practice. Absolutely. And the goods are just supposed to pass through our corridor mm. to another country. Mm. And we are obliged to facilitate that. Right. But you realize that if the trade is not flowing well mm. and it is not conducive yeah. for the importer or the trader who is using the facility, they will be finding ways of you know, reducing their problems. Right. Okay. So I can say that from where I sit, we are shedding some volumes to our neighboring country. Right. Because um, the Togo port itself, now they are seeing... The Lome port. The Lome mm. port. They are now seeing increase in volumes. Mm. So definitely those volumes are coming from somewhere. Mm. <laughs> and you are pretty much sure that they, they are coming from Ghana. Apart from, apart from Ghana, mm. when you take our West Coast, unless um, Nigeria... Nigeria or maybe somewhere Douala or something, mm. or even Côte d'Ivoire. Côte d'Ivoire. Okay. But the actual port of preference mm. is our Tema port. Right. In the sub-region, mm. related to our neighboring landlocked countries, mm. Côte d'Ivoire, uh, Burkina yeah. Faso, yeah. Mali, and Niger. Mm. They prefer to do business here mm. because it is safe. Yeah. It is secured. The only problem is the regulations yeah. and the cost. Mm. Of course, customs are mandated to regulate the trade. Absolutely. Within, within the laws of Ghana. Yeah. And no trader will kick against the laws of any country. But sometimes they go way beyond the laws and mm. the regulations and introduce new new things that you, are happening you mean, you mean on the ground. You mean customs? Customs. Mm. A lot of things that they introduce just because of um, this diversion that we are discussing. Mm. But practical results mm. has to show that the new rules and regulations they are introducing, yeah. are they yielding results? Mm. What are, are some, they, of these, some of these new regulations, if you would oblige us? Okay. Um, the, they are trying to implement something like containerized yes, I, truck, I just mentioned, like yeah, you have sure, mentioned absolutely. earlier on. Mm. It will not change anything. Mm. It will just increase cost of doing the business. Mm. Wow. Because we already have containerized goods mm. that are in transit every day. Right. A whole ship will come and more than 100, 200, 300 containers, they are all in transit. Mm. And it's containerized. Right. So if you are still having a problem about diversion, then you should actually look at how the operation of the whole trade is going. Mm. Not necessarily the covered means of conveying the, the goods. The goods. You, you, you understand? Mm. Yeah. Because the, containers, the container itself, yeah. they are even more secured than the ones that are going to be fabricated. Yeah, on the trucks, yeah. On the trucks. Mm. These trucks, it is not um, government trucks mm. or GRE, GAPOA trucks. Yeah. They are owned by private companies, mm. private individuals. Yeah. So now 
if somebody wants to just come to Ghana, Tema Port, and carry... You have to go and get your, 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 your truck container, sure right? Yeah, they, they fabricate. Do the, you understand? Yeah. Now, if the person is able to even do that, mm. that means that his transportation is restricted to his uh, cargo carriage from only Tema Port and this. Mm. Every time, a trader or a business person should have a flexibility yeah. of doing business. Mm. If you if you go and you go and build a, a cargo container on yeah. your articulator, yeah. it means that you cannot do any other thing apart from they that. Could, yeah. But no trucker would, would do that. Mm. So, fine. I don't know what actually informed that decision. Yes, it came up our last. So, so, so your thought or your thinking is that if that is done, uh, we might lose some other, you know, uh, further business. Business, okay. Further business because. Mm. The only thing that is going to impact the trader is the cost. Mm. Mind you, these goods, they are just passing through our corridor. Mm. They get to their country before they go and pay the uh, taxes on them. Right. Just like Jira said, that yeah. within Ghana, the taxes are suspended. Yes. So they get to their, bo uh, their borders mm. and now go and pay the taxes there. Mm. So if just the transit is costing them this much yeah. before they go pay their taxes, they will have to do their calculations well. Mm. You mm. understand? Mm. This is just real. Yeah. Okay. So we are saying that the rules as it is now, mm. even on the books, right. long time ago, transit business has been with us forever. Yeah. If the rules are followed to the latter, mm. monitored by customs, customs and all the authorities, the, the, the rules as they stand now are enough to do the business. Mm. The new things that they are bringing up, they're not going to improve on anything. Right. They're not going to stop diversion. Because even the people who we are targeting as in, involving in the diversion, yeah. they, 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 don't, they, don't, they are not even paying attention to all this thing that we are doing. Mm. So you end up Disturbing people who are doing legitimate business. Business, yeah. You understand? The people who are actually coming to the port declare mm. that this is what I want to do. This is the only business they do here. Yeah. They stay here morning, afternoon, evening, mm. all day, all week long. It is only transit business. Yeah. Customs sometime back had this um, profiling of traders. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what happens to one person that you have arrested diverting goods. Mm. If diversion has become so much of a problem, right. let's at least get one person. Mm. You have seen them. You have been arresting them. What happens to mm. them? Which will serve as a deterrent to anybody who is sitting back and also having that thought. Right. You see, mm. it shouldn't be like, oh, you have arrested somebody who has diverted this. Okay, so because of that, let's do this. Mm. And whatever happens to this person is in the background. Right. I am in the trade. I don't know anything about it. Mm. Customs, we have a very good working relation with them. We understand that when we want to even do our operational, renew our operational licenses, yes. we all have, uh, all freight forwarders mm. belong to one or the other association. Association, yeah, sure. We give letters Customs, to, your, to your members, yeah. For customs to renew, to renew our members' operational license. Yes. But as to whether they even revert to us that this member, as you may see, does it belong to GIF? Does it belong to Achag? Or does it belong to any mm, of us? Mm. What can we also do, mm. you know, to yeah. our members? Right. That will deter them from doing it. Yeah. Because if you are the one giving the best operational license, and the person doesn't have a pressing license, mm. you will start hawking, looking for somewhere to work from. Right. And it is not very, very con con convenient for a business person mm. who is actually in the business to be going from one office to the other. Well done, yeah. Today, he might get somebody to do the work on his behalf, but that is profit sharing, yeah. and that is losing the business. Mm. Because if you are an importer, and you bring me this thing to be carried from here to... Yeah. And then I go to a third person to help me carry this to you. Yeah. 
at the end of the day, if you are very careful about your business and want to protect your business, why wouldn't you contact the third person? Mm. Because he is established right. and he is dealing with your goods mm. through your middleman. So mm. it means that your agent that you are dealing with is just a, a middle person carrying yeah. document to another yeah. person's office. It's a disincentive for people to be doing it. Right. In, in every society, there will be bad match. Absolutely. But like you have said, we have evidence that over 95% people involved in this transit business are doing legitimate business. business. Okay. Now, we know that um, transit business is under suspense review. Yes. So the taxes on them has been suspended. Mm. For now, if you want to do transit yeah. on this item, mm. after you have your violation through customs, yes. you post a bond mm. that you pay to the insurance company. Okay. You pay for a tracking device mm. that's going to be on the truck yes. carrying this. Yes. Apart from that, for certain goods that customs classify as high duty items. Yes. They now want human escort. Mm. Okay. We have had human escort long, long, long time Past ago years. before technology has come yes. with all these tracking devices. Okay, but if you are a trader and you want to encourage people to do business at your port, mm. for the same transaction, we pay the tracking device on the declaration. Right. We go to insurance company and pay another bond mm. to cover the same everything. And then now, on top of that, for the same transaction, we are going to pay for human escort. Right. Okay. Choose one. So that we know that, okay, if we are passing a declaration, mm. and the declaration is... But, uh, but, but posting the bond, that's the, getting the insurance is very imperative. It's very necessary because it a, helps you... That is yes, the law. You, that is you, very important. Absolutely. And then also uh, tracking the cargo mm -hmm. uh, to ensure that they don't get missing. It's also very key. Yes. It? yes. So now the third person mm. who is the human escort, mm. all these ones come with cost. Okay, so... There the, the, the seems to be some duplication here because you have the tracker and you have a human escort. And then you have the insurance bond. Okay. All, all, all involves mm. money. Okay. And every business person who is doing his work, mm. he looks at the cost of doing the work. Yeah. So if the tracker is not effective, as virtually now you are declaring, mm. but you monitor the tracker, the device is monitored by customs and ICOMs. Right. They give you the software, you monitor where the car is any time. Mm. If that is not enough, if there's any diversion, the insurance company that has given you, issued you a bond yeah. to cover those taxes, mm. how are they liable? Yeah. How many times has customs fall on insurance companies to pay for um, whatever mm -hmm. so for, uh, have diverted, uh, taxes yeah. have been mm. suspended? Mm. Okay. We know that there are issues between customs and insurance companies when it comes to that. Mm. But one way or the other, a certain premium has been paid to cover a bond sum. Right. So even if it is not enough, mm. call on them, collect that money first. Yeah. Let's see something happening to whoever is caught in diverting goods. Right. Not meant for Ghana. Mm. Those are the clear signs that will send signal to everybody mm. that, hey, if you are caught carrying this thing in uh, pretending to be sending it out, right. and you are caught in Ghana, consuming the goods in Ghana, mm. this A, B, C, D is and what is going apply. to happen. Okay. All right. Let me come to uh, Mr. Yeah. Uh, Alberto. And uh, right. he, he made mention of the fact that if these uh, uh, trucks are containerized, if the right. trucks are containerized, uh, it might pose a challenge. Um, generally, it would affect trade because some people might choose not to use uh, the ports here again because they think that it's going to add up to the cost of doing business. Now, um, I just want to find out from you what the overarching objective is for trying to introduce this particular policy. Yeah, like he said, mm. uh, we met, that was, that was last week, Friday, we had an engagement and this thing came up. Mm. So we told them that. Who are in a meet an engagement again with the transporters? Right. 
so that we look at how we can address this issue. Mm. Yes, uh, before we came here, we had a discussion about the place, and I was telling him that uh, we started using these open vehicles so many years ago. ago. Okay, and then we need to advance and do mm. something. Mm. But for the safety purposes, mm. at least if your stuff are in an enclosed vehicle yeah. and delivered to you, how you like it. It protects the stuff yeah. and so many things, security-wise. Yeah, then at the same the time, too, uh, we may not need so many things, like an electronic cable to run around the trucks mm. and on. We can just strap, arm them easily, yeah. and then yeah. they go. Mm. Mm. So these are some of the essence. And then do also help in uh, reducing some of the those who are doing diversions. Mm. Yes, that was going to be my next question. How containerizing the trucks would help nip uh, the, the, the issue of uh, diversion in the bad? Yeah, like what he said, how is it going to help? Fine. Uh, I agree with him that it's not going to stop the diversion, even if somebody says it's going to do a diversion right. anyway. Yes, but at least for the safety of the, the, the goods and then at the same time, somebody tampering with the items. Right. Okay. Uh, sometimes... Uh, some of them will open it and then offload some. A pill frame. Yes, and pill frame and all those yeah. kind of things. Mm. It will reduce it. Mm. It will reduce, it, it, it reduce that. Right. And then to the question of like the escort, he said, mm. fine. Yeah, it's a worry because uh, uh, they are paying for tracking devices yes. and then they are paying for escort. But from Section 95 of the, our Act, Act, Act 891, 2015, yeah, Section 95, Clause or subsection six mm. uh, said, Commissioner General, let me quote it. it said, a person shall not transport goods under customs escort unless the Commissioner General considers it necessary to do so. Right. Yeah. It came up because uh, so there are suspicion that some high risk goods are, are likely to be diverted, mm. and um, because of that, we have to place escort on them. Mm. Yeah. So it's not the entirety of the whole. Uh, transit trade, mm. yes. But beside, beside that, we will also be working towards to bring or still new developments and things, at least to reduce what people may think uh, uh, people are diverting or something, mm. to strengthen or make the system more robust. Absolutely. Yeah. But for, for, some, for now, there are some high risk goods like uh, rice, mm -hmm. tomato paste, mm cooking oil, vegetable oil, mm. ethanol alcohol, mm. diapers. Mm. Uh, you can see uh, a lot of people are bringing them now, a lot. So um, directed from Commissioner, Commissioner General, yes. that they are, we should ensure that uh, they put escort on them. Mm. Yeah. And some of them are suspicious, you know. So when you see somebody who has even involved in... Um, Diversion else, something yeah. like all. So we put on those people. Mm. When you say high risk goods, uh, you mentioned rice. Yeah. How does rice become a high risk good? Because uh, when you say high risk goods, one is tempted to say dangerous goods. Yes, yeah, exactly. And that's quite different. Dangerous goods in, in yeah. uh, the, let's say explosives exactly. or something. Exactly. But when you categorize rice as yes. high risk, then yes. it's kind of like. Yeah, in, uh, yeah, in a risk assessment profile. Okay. Okay. Mm. In a risk, actually, in the risk assessment profile on transit, yes. everything flags red. Right. So let me say it's high risk because we say it's high risk because, mm. like I explained, yes, the taxes they run has been suspended. Okay. So it means it's open. Right. And it means taxes have, have not have been not paid, paid on them yet exactly. until they get to the destination. destination. So, so what a route they can easily enter risk. the local market. Awesome. I get it. So it becomes a high risk. Company. Okay. Okay. That's what this said. Mm. So with the escort, we we'll work. We we'll try and do. We we'll have to do a lot of work. Mm. Because I, I, I was doing some research, and I got to know that uh, even the transporters or the trucks are not validated in the system. Mm. Okay? So any truck can just put in and then it goes. So it's something that we are going to work towards now. Right. Then we told them, we will engage them. We're supposed to have a meeting with the transport union, even Wednesday, right. and start doing these things, read registration of the trucks, for them to do get validation from DVLA, right. make sure the chassis number goes with the uh, license plate mm. and everything, then we input all into ICOMS. Right. So that if those trucks 
are not registered in ICOMS, mm. you can't use it because it's like you go to the declarant, you take the documents to him with the truck, you just key and then it's gone. Yeah. It shouldn't be like that. It should be validated mm. from a source. So this is what uh, I did the research and I got to know that. And not only that, even the transitors, mm. the transitors too, we have to validate them okay. from their various representatives, the ship, the shippers council. Right. From their, from their end, yeah. From their yeah. end. You have the, all of them here. Yeah. So they have to validate it and go. And not only that, even that, I got to know, I did another research, I got to know, even the transit declarants, mm. they are not registered. We must, we, we must see all these things and profile them. Right. And then the good ones mm. are those who will do the, the job. Mm. Also, that when is Thursday or so, Thursday was holiday. Yeah. When is there was in the investigation mm. office and... There was an issue of something like that. Right. And then the guy was sitting down, and the guy told me that when he killed the data, and he had two to it, and it went through. It means right. it's not validated. Mm. Uh, you guys know what I'm saying? Right. So we have to ensure that we sit with all the stakeholders, mm. listen to them, their needs professionally, and gather the information, right. and streamline, and all will go away to reduce what my brother is saying. Awesome. For the legitimate compliance transitors to do their business. Okay. All right. This is our report here on Metropolitan Television, and tonight we are taking a look at how to prevent diversion of transit cargo, uh, you know, and the role that customs uh, would have to play in ensuring that. And the good news from Mr. Gerard Agueto is that we are not losing transit cargo. Uh, he's done his checks, he's done his uh, research, and it indicates that we are appreciating uh, in terms of, you know, uh, transit trade. Uh, we pray that it goes on that way. Even though Mr. Uh, Ediama thinks that, yes, we are losing some trade to Togo. We have not been able to verify or authenticate that claim. But that's why he says. He says Ghana is losing some, uh, you know, transit goods to Togo. We are yet to verify that, and we would confirm whether that is actually the situation or not. We are going for a quick break. Uh, when we return, we'll continue the discussion. Please do stay with us. Guys, now I'm tired. I'll go on a date with whoever gets here first. Princess, really? Okay, I'll be calm. Shut <laughs> Boss, fill my tank with Super XP Run 95. Fill up with Super XP Run 95 and Diesel XP high performance products from Goyle. <laughs> Sorry, Tony got hit first, so I'm stepping with him. Oh, cut him, cut him. Hey! Go for that boy, mommy. Choose Super XP Run 95 and Diesel XP for an energizing driving experience. Always go for Goyle Super XP Run 95. Goyle, good energy. Electricity, electricity, our taxes, yeah. our taxes, our future. our future. Because you see, without our taxes, we wouldn't have good roads, good schools, better hospitals, street lights, and other very important social amenities. When we pay our taxes, we give our children free and quality education. Tell that my money too small. Why should I pay my tax? Look, small. Cellful, it doesn't matter how small or big your business or income is, you still have to pay your taxes. The little taxes from each and every one of us, when put together, could give your community clean water or that deprived school with tables and chairs. Please pay your taxes. It is your responsibility. It is your civic duty. It is the law. Impressive factory. If only I had listened to you, I wouldn't have been in this mess. That devastating fire virtually wiped out the whole factory and my warehouse. Remember my misfortunes last year? Serene insurance assets all risk fire policies that I took were there to pay for my damaged stocks in the warehouse. And my machines that were affected by the flood have been replaced. My accident vehicle is back on the road. Thanks to Serene Insurance Motor Policy. Suddenly my goods are on the IC covered with the American cargo insurance policy. I was just telling Ajima about Serene Insurance. Oh, Ajima. Tell him more. As a road contractor, I make sure I do my contractors all risk insurance for the projects and then workers compensation for all the workers on site with serene insurance they will make sure they will cover your unknown tomorrow today serene insurance a new face of insurance call us now
MPS Terminal 3 is Africa's new state-of-the-art container terminal at Tema Port. For manufacturers, agro-processors and traders, the new port means business can be done faster. This infrastructure boost will improve Ghana's port handling capacity, connect more trading routes and oil the engine of growth for the economy, creating greater opportunities across all sectors as Africa's markets merge and become the largest trading bloc globally. MPS, we connect, you thrive. Business and life can be like the sea sometimes, sometimes serene, sometimes calm, sometimes turbulent, and at times it brings the unexpected. However it is like, trust Phoenix Insurance for your home, car, business, and marine insurance needs. Call 0302-246-319 or 0243-690-492. At Phoenix, you experience a delightful service delivered with wisdom. All right, so welcome back. This is our important remember here on Metropolitan Television. And tonight we are taking a look at how to prevent the diversion of uh, transit goods and the role that customs would have to play. Indeed, not only customs, but other stakeholders as well. And so tonight we have in the studios Mr. Uh, Gerald Agbeto, who is the Chief Revenue Officer. He's the Chief Revenue Officer at the Ghana Regional Authority. He's also in charge, the officer in charge of transit. And indeed, also in the studios is Mr. Eric Adiyama, who is a council member of the Ghana Institute of Freight Forwarders. Give. He's also a practicing, you know, freight fuel forwarder who uh, into, is into uh, the transit trade. So um, we would activate the phone lines for you now to call in and, uh, you know, contribute to the discussion. When the time is right, we shall also share your messages with the rest of the world. Remember, the number to dial is right there on your screen, 0205528353, 0205528353. You can call in and contribute to the discussion. Let me come to you, uh, Mr. Agueto. Um, still in the research that you conducted on transit trade. Now, uh, the element that was missing from the information you gave us is the freight on board. That's uh, free on board. That's FOB. Exactly. Exactly. If you can walk us through what yeah. you saw uh, yeah. during your research, what, yeah. what you came up with. Yeah, when I did the research, mm, I have mentioned yeah. the, the, the mass already. So the, with the, with the uh, FOB for 2023, on the period, and we mentioned January to 10th April. Right. Yeah, I had about almost $1.5 million. $1.5 $1. $1. $1. $1. $1. $1. $1. $1. Trillion, trillion, trillion dollars. From January to? To 10th April. 10th April. Exactly. 2024? No, I mean 2023. 2023. Exactly. Okay. Then for 2024, the same period, it's about $4.3 trillion. So right. So it increased about three, two times, three times. Wow. So with this, I told you, yes. I, initially, I joined the chorus, mm -hmm. like, yes. say, we are losing, losing trade uh, to Beni, yes. we are losing our trade to uh, mm. Lome, but mm. it is not that way, from right. the data. Okay, you, you, you yeah, come I in. Want to, I want to say something small. Yes. The FOB yes. element that he has mentioned, mm. it might only be true to a very, to some extent, mm. because generally, the cost of everything yeah. has multiplied. Right. So if you do a research and then an FOB figure you got in 2023 mm. is one point something trillion. Right. And then in 2024, it mm. jumps by three, three times. Fold. Yeah. Threefold. Mm. It does not necessarily mean that the volumes that are jump are high. is because of the volume. Mm. It is just the cost itself. Mm. Because over the period, the freight, the freight of goods. Right has increased more than 10 times. I agree with you. Mm. And the FOB you're talking about, yeah. that is uh, in uh, rate inclusive. No, 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 this is not rate inclusive. The FOB, it is yes, the yes. amount in a yes. foreign yes, the cost land of before it gets here. Yes, before it gets here. Right. Before it gets here. So the freight is not inclusive. So the freight, the, the freight alone has also increased. Right. Yeah, but okay. they had the freight. Oh, you yeah, didn't add the freight. Just by correlation to the mass, uh, gross mass of the, of the cargo. Cargo, absolutely. Just in relation. I was just correlating it. Yeah, sure. But not necessarily basing on that. Absolutely. But the research actually based on the... Volume, the volumes, yeah. But that one, it has See, increased. If you bring the, if you All right, bring so the volume you, 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 you would come in, Mr. Adiyama, but uh, let's go on the phone lines and welcome Tony, 
uh, who's watching and calling us all the way from Spintex here in Accra. Good evening, sir. Tony. Yeah, good evening. Awesome. Please shoot. Yeah, I want to speak about the transit trade. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, the transit trade is a trade in... Yeah, uh, good evening. Yes, good evening. We can hear you. Please go, please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, the transit trade, what some of us have observed is that the transit documents are just like normal import documents. Mm. But if you watch the transit documents... Yes, we can hear you, Tony. So, the... I think your line, your, your line is quite cranky. If you can position yourself well and uh, lower the volume on your TV set, I think that would do us a great deal of good. Okay, I understand Tony is off, yes. All right, so Mr. Adiyama, you, you were coming in when okay. uh, Tony is so, um, I, um, I just want to say that um, the FOB issue is subjective. Right. Because the cost of every right. goods and service actually has gone up. Mm. Multiple folds. Right. right. Okay. But I'm not based on the FOB. I'm based on the weight, rather. Right, the but weight. Just to correlate okay. it, because the, the weight goes with the FOB. Absolutely. But the, but, but the, the whole thing is on the weight. Right. You see, the thing is that mm. well, even the weight that he's talking about, mm. if we take bulk cargo, yeah. one vessel comes in with um, rice mm. meant from Mali, yeah. 11,800 tons. Mm. The, the cost of rice has jumped more than five, ten times over a short period of time. Okay, so we'll come back to that. But Tony is, is on the line once okay. again. I think we've, uh, he's gotten us a better. We've gotten a better line. Hello, Tony. Uh, once again, welcome. Yeah, yeah I, I, just, I was saying the the transit documents are just like normal import documents. But if you watch their invoices, most of the time their invoices are not. They are not genuine invoices. They are not invoices that are from the uh, in, uh, sources where they bought the goods from. They just sit in Tema and produce uh, invoices and uh, and uh, under declare what they are they are they are supposed to take across the the, uh, the other country, uh, misdescribing items. And uh, I mean, it's just the transit trade is really in a mess. So if there's custom officer there really wants to be serious about this transit trade. They should, they should, because that is where Ghana is losing a lot of revenue. Mm. All right. Uh, they are looking, losing a lot of revenue. Thank All you. Right. Thank you very much, Tony. Um, I don't know whether you'd want, you have anything to say with respect to what he says. Uh, uh, Mr. Gerald, uh, yeah. Mr. Abgato. Right. Uh, what Tony is saying. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what Tony is saying. Revenue, uh, from that side. Yeah, what Tony is saying. So, mm. Um, Big invoices he mentioned. Yeah, yeah, it, it is true. Mm. Uh, that is why uh, we are having challenges on values. Right. Okay. The values they bring sometimes uh, you, you can't believe it. Like right. I saw one, I was going through the data and some arise. Um, declared val value is about point zero point forty mm. cent. Per kilo, very low. 0 0.40 cents. 10 per kilo. Okay? Mm. And those that are coming into home consumption, that taxes will be paid on them. I, I, they are using about point, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 1.2, dollar, and etc. Mm. So, due to that, um, the authorities are working on that so that right. they can uplift the value. Mm. Because, and this is another gap measure yeah. to stop diversion. Absolutely. Okay. Because when uh, we shoot the price, the, the values up, up yeah. to equivalent of those one coming into home yeah. consumption, and you go and then you divert, mm. because you are going to get a bond sum on that, that, that uh, 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 value. Right. So when you divert, that's what we are going to collect from the insurance company. Mm then we add the penalties to it. Right. So that will deter those who get themselves involved in diversion. Right. Okay. 
I'll come to you so that you can also uh, give us a response. But let me uh, go on to the lines and uh, welcome uh, P, who is calling us from Tema. Good evening, sir. Hey, good evening. Awesome. Please go ahead. Okay, please. Uh, as was the, uh, the chief uh, in charge was mm. saying that the valuation, now the valuation and the import duty are the same. The, the transit and the import valuation is the same. Because of the diversion issue, that you should accept that issue. That is true. That you need to have a standard one with the import one. The problem we have now is the human effort. Upon the insurance policy that we pay, we pay it after with the value that we have that we pay for the insurance bond, the premium. Upon all everything, what we don't understand is. I think the uh, inside also mentioned about um, asked that if the general commissioner think that some goods need to go with human escort, he will give. But does the law say that in that as human escort, should the importer pay for it or then it's from their own GRE who will pay for that escort? Mm. Plus the device that we pay to I comes to monitor everywhere the car goes. Because when it comes to diversion, everybody is attacking the agents and the importer. Right. But the main shareholder who is maybe something like that can be helping that as will be the custom. Because when a BOE is uh, to a BOE is to go to maybe Hamil or a flower everywhere around the border, if your BOE is not clear in the system, by all means they will catch you. So who is the person who cleared the DOE that the car has to there? We need to bring that one to. And the, one, the woman has got to be assessment. They don't give receipt. They don't give receipt so that you show to the importer that custom are charging woman has got. This is the receipt. Hmm. Right, Fee, thank you very much. I think your point is well made. He's talking about, you know, the, the kind of duplication that we are talking about, the customs, uh, you know, the, the uh, you know, escorts the bond from insurance companies and even and the then escort. Yeah, sure. yeah. Yes, it's, uh, you it's know, like three we, uh, the, ec the subregion, the ECOWAS, yes. uh, has, we have something called SIGMAT. Yes. The SIGMAT is electronic yeah. exchange yes. of customs data on the movement of transit cargo among the customs uh, corporation in West Africa. Yes. Okay. Uh, this particular is an add-on or mm. a very robust that is aiding the transit trade. Yes. But unfortunately, we had some um, glitches just recently, mm. but uh, our developers are working on it. I was monitoring it from last, the Monday, we're doing right. monitoring, it's now moving up. Mm. The essence of this segment mm. is such that an example, when you put the process, mm. the bonded transportation, yeah. and it's released from the transit pack. Right. And it's going to say Togo. Yeah. We are connected to Togo and Cote d'Ivoire for now. Right. Left to connect to Niger and Burkina Faso. We have okay. done all everything, testing, but due to the crisis around right. those places, we suspended it. So right. very soon we'll connect them and then we'll solve the problem. Mm. It will send the message to the final destination, right. which is, let's say, Lume. Yeah. And at the same time, it will send the message to Aflao or Akano right. at our Ghana side yes. that this cargo is coming. The weight, the description, the value, yes. and everything. Then you have a, a common MR number right. that uh, is a movement reference number mm. that will be used to identify the cargo or the truck within or the ECOWAS region, right. wherever you get into the system. Okay. So the systems, the, comput the computer the system, system exactly yeah. has okay. been connected. Then he gets, one, someone is on the line. Yes, someone is on the line, so That's when right. I come back, you continue. Right. Um, I understand we have Habib uh, calling us all the way from the northern regional capital, Tamale. Good evening, sir. Good evening, my brother. Awesome, good to have you. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, mine is just a small contribution I want to make as to whether you will take it or not. Hello. Yes, hello. We can hear you, please. Go ahead. Ah, it's about, it's about a vehicle. Okay. Yes, it's my own vehicle. I bought it 
scrap in Tamale. You've got what in Tamale? Then I bought a vehicle. Yes, in Tamale. A, a car. Yes. Scrap in Tamale. Yes. Is it a truck? A scrap, yes, scrap in Tamale. Okay. And I went and bought engine, bought the tires, bought the doors, made it now, it's no travel. And here are the people, they seize the car. So when I went forward, they said, no, the car is not registered in the country. And for that matter, I, I, I'm going to forfeit the vehicle. And I said, ah, but okay. you can see it's crap. All right, so it's uh, crap. yes, Mr. Habib, thank you very much for the concern. Um, my, my production team will take your contact and then we'll get back to you, please. We'll do that. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Habib, who called us yeah, uh, so from Tamale. Yes, you, I, I think you have been itching too. But just yeah, let, me, let, me, let me just land. Just land right. So the SIGMAT will send information to uh, Togo yes. and then to our border. Mm. Then when the trucks get there, they will examine the truck, right. and see everything is intact, mm. and also update the system. Right. Then the, if it is a Kojovia that's sharing with a flower yes. or a Kano Nope, yes. then they also have access to the data now. Right. And they also will do the update, check everything, and then mm. do that. And the truck will move finally to maybe Lome, right. where they will conduct the examination. Mm. When they conduct the examination, according to uh, the details, mm. and the everything is fine, then they will okay it. Okay. Then we'll get the information that the trucks has really arrived. Right. Unlike the first time where we use document and we go and then we stamped. Yes. I saw, because the system went down recently, I saw uh, one of the deputy commissioner operations written in something like that, ensure that it's stamped certificate and everything to uh, have. Yes. But the ICOMs, the SIGMAT take care of those things. An example was uh, last year, around October, September, I went in Aflao. Yes. And we have to go to Akano, there was a problem. Right. Yeah, the SIGMAT brought the message to mm. us, to Akano. And when he brought the message and the container arrived, he opened the container in a, uh, Lume. Right. And it was a hide. And they took some. They said they got that, uh, uh, what do they say? They got market. So yes. they took some of the goods out of it. Right. So when they brought them and they, do, they did assessment, the gross weight of the hide was not up to what the message that came. Yes. But the value was perfect. Okay. So the authorities there decided to do the assessment. Mm using the value right so it became uh, a big issue, issue. yeah it, people are saying they are not agreeing so we fortunately we went there mm. with the previous uh, ac transit yes. was in charge and we have to go and solve the problem so we start with them and it's okay the essence of the sigma does not mean when the value come you use what is on the value right. that to examine mm. and then when you see the actual quantity you can do the calculation Absolutely. use the value yeah then you will send information back to them that the container did not come fully. Mm. This is the quantity that came. Yeah. So that they can surcharge the person That's right. in the country. Right. So this is the essence of the sigma. Okay. All right. So, yes, yeah, please, please um, come in. We there's have a few comments on yes. some of the points that my brother has raised. Yes. Mm. The sigma, I'm taking it from the sigma. Yes. It's a, it's a good, um, <coughs> it's a good uh, project, project uh, that is... Um, in the in the works, mm. it's not hundred percent complete. Yes, but virtually uh, what ICOMS is doing now is about the same. Mm. If you take the declaration, then as soon as the um, document is finished in the port of Tema, when they are dispatching, the exit point they they uh, they can have that same uh, information. But it is still a good thing to do. Mm. Number two, um, I'm coming back to the containerized trucks. If we take a bulk cargo, like rice, sugar, and all those things, how those things are going on transit? How do you take um, containerized cargo to carry rice from Temaport to, let's say, Niger? Okay? Mm. That, that is very difficult to do. And sometimes, because of the journey, even food items, they can even get spoiled. But... Um, the containerized cargo thing, like I said, we agreed in our, in our last meeting exactly. that we'll do more consultation on exactly. it and, the, and discuss how we'll move forward with, with that. Yeah. And then uh, about the registered um, declarants. Yes. Yeah. 
every declarant that is working as a freight forwarder mm. is legally registered to operate transit business. Right. Because all the information about the declarant is with customs. Right. If they put your name, um, your declarant number, mm. they know exactly the company. Right. So if we talk about registering the members to do transit business, mm. okay, you can do it as one of your procedures. Yes. But it's, I don't think that it is something that should deprive any agent from passing a... No, if, you are, a if, if, if you are out of good standing. Mm. Uh, uh, anybody who exactly. is already uh, registered right. and he's got his operational license. Yeah. And he has not done anything for you to revoke it. That's what mm. I'm saying. It's legitimate. Right. 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 Mm. It's legitimate. And all the information uh, are there. Right. And then um, talking about the registration of the vehicles and all those yeah. things. Those ones, we have all been working on that same project exactly. for a very long time. Right. And we know that it is important that we identify some of the trucks doing their business. Right. Like it is right now. Mm. A lot of them have registered, but you yeah. use the correct way that they have to update their system. Absolutely. Uh, right? So yeah. if maybe you don't have the information on all the trucks working, mm. it does not mean that they are um, not registered to Absolutely. do their business. Do their because business. Port Authority, they also insist and check on all those uh, trucks, trucks before they load them. Right. And then the weight that he has said, last meeting we had, this weight issue came, came up. up yeah about overload and then a weight sharing. Yeah. And Port Authority, they have a very good system of yeah. weighing mm. their cargo in their port. Right. Okay. The same Ghana Highways yeah. that mandated that skill that yeah, they're using. It's the same Ghana Highways operating the one at the motorway. Yeah. But you realize that you leave the port of Tema mm. 